friends welcome to my channel so today we are back with yet another episode of image based questions in this lecture we'll be doing radiographic diagnosis of cyst of jaws this is very important topic considering your need in mind it is quite definite that something will be definitely asked from the cyst of the jaws so now any further ado let's get started this diagram typically shows the primordial cyst primordial cyst develops due to cystic changes in the stellate reticulum of a tooth germ before it mineralizes therefore the tooth does not develop according to recent concept most primordial cyst are actually keratocyst odontogenic tumors if the primordial cyst develops in a supernumerary tooth bud or from remnants of the lamina dura then the number of teeth present will be complete otherwise the affected tooth will be missing so this indicates the primordial cyst when affected tooth is missing it may be associated with an erupted over retained deciduous tooth Here in this radiograph you can see a multilocular KCOT seen in relation to the mandibular premolar and molars on a panoramic radiograph Many people believe that these cyst are the same as primordial cyst but this view is not universally accepted Guys do keep in mind that 11% of all jaw cysts are keratocystic odontogenic tumors as it is named recently by WHO WHO recommends the term keratocystic odontogenic tumor as it better reflects its neoplastic nature. Now what comprises KCOT? It is benign uni or multicystic intraosseous tumor of odontogenic origin with a characteristic lining of parakeratinized stratified squamous epithelium and potential for aggressive infiltrative behavior. This is a diagrammatical representation of the most likely sites of the KCOT of the jaws. It is more common in the mandible near the angle extending into the ramus and forward into the body. The canine region of the maxilla and mandible and the mandibular molar region are the preferred sites. In maxilla it causes buccal expansion. Here you can see a KCOT seen as an unilocular radiolucency extending from lower right first molar into the ramus with sclerotic borders and showing displacement of the third molar this is a radiographical image of golan golds syndrome where multiple kcots are found this panoramic view shows multiple well corticated radiolucencies in the bilateral parasymphysial region of mandible and angle of mandible with minimal expansion You can also see the bilaterally displaced lower canine to the lower border of the mandible. An impacted tooth is noted in right maxillary region with increased follicular space. Here is the chest x-ray which shows bifid right fourth and left third rib, okay? So what comprises Golan Golds syndrome? This is an inherited abnormality which includes multiple nevoid basal cell carcinoma of the skin. skeletal central nervous system and eye abnormalities and multiple jaw cyst which are usually odontogenic keratocyst this is the radiographic appearance of lateral periodontal cyst it is usually found on the lateral surfaces of vital teeth note down the term vital teeth okay and most often the mandibular canine and premolar region Radiographic features of lateral periodontal cyst are it is seen as a round to ovoid radiolucency with hyperostotic margins. You can see the excessive bony deposition around the margins, right? And it is located between the cervical margins and apex of the root surface and it is always less than 1 cm in diameter in most of the cases. This panoramic radiograph shows a dentigerous cyst in relation to lower left third molar. On the panoramic radiograph a second lesion appears to be involving the lower premolar and first molar resolving the involved teeth the two radiolucencies seen on the radiograph were actually continuous on the lingual aspect of 37 sparing the tooth supporting bone and buccal cortex of 37 so dentigerous cyst forms around the crown of an unerupted tooth It begins when fluid accumulates in the layers of reduced enamel epithelium 
or between the epithelium and crown of the unerupted tooth or maybe due to cystic changes of the enamel organ after the formation of the crown this is the second most common type of cyst as you must be knowing is a cropped panoramic image which shows a well defined radiolucent lesion with sclerotic margins in relation to impacted and developing lower left third molar which is attached to CEJ and the lesion extends into the ramus almost up to the sigmoid notches so it may envelop the crown symmetrically or it may expand laterally from the crown but the roots of the same may be located in the bone outside the lesion here is the schematic representation of apical lateral and residual radicular cyst this is the most likely the results in rest of epithelial cells or cell rest of malleases in the periodontal ligament are stimulated to proliferate and undergo cystic degeneration here cropped panoramic showing a well defined radiolucency associated with lower first molar with corticated margins and loss of lamina dura which is infected radicular cyst it appears as a round or pear shaped radiolucency usually resulting from dental caries or trauma in association with a non vital tooth so do mark it it is associated with non vital tooth and the epicenter of the radicular cyst is usually located approximately at the apex of a non vital tooth radiolucency is usually more than 1.5 cm but less than 3 cm in diameter so all these points you have to keep in mind while judging the image based questions of opgs when they are given specifically showing any cyst Here is the residual radicular cyst with a well defined circular radiolucency with sclerotic border is seen in relation to missing 11 and 12 the radiolucency extends from the sockets of 11 and 12 and extends posteriorly so the residual cyst is uh, that which remains after incomplete removal of the original cyst or one that has either remained after the associated tooth was extracted or formed in the residual epithelial cell rest from the periodontal ligament of the lost tooth here is the schematic representation of nasopalatal cyst and median fissural cyst nasopalatal cyst is the developmental in origin and arises in the nasopalatal canal when embryonic epithelial remnants of the nasopalatal duct undergo proliferation and cystic degeneration here in the diagram a is indicated by nasopalatal cyst this is found in the nasopalatal foramen or canal if it extends posteriorly to involve the hard palate it may be referred to as median palatal cyst and if it extends anteriorly between the centrals destroying and expanding the labial plate of bone and causing the teeth to diverge it is referred to as median anterior maxillary cyst It is well defined corticated circular or or oval radiolucency. So the maxillary occlusal shows a nasopalatal cyst with a well circumscribed unilocular cystic radiolucency in anterior maxilla between central incisors. As you can see the lesion is round and has corticated margins. Superiorly it extends into the palatal vault causing expansion and resorption of nasal floor. Here is the schematic representation of naso alveolar which is denoted by A and globulo maxillary cyst which is denoted by B. So these these are the particular locations of naso alveolar and globulo maxillary cyst. Here you can see the globulo maxillary cyst as seen on a cropped panoramic radiograph between the maxillary lateral and canine. It occurs in the globulo maxillary region and is considered to be an inclusion or developmental cyst that arises from entrapped non-odontogenic epithelium in globulo maxillary suture. And on a radiograph it appear as a inverted pear shaped or inverted tear shaped radiolucency which is characteristic of globulo maxillary cyst. The other name of globulo maxillary cyst is intra alveolar cyst or pre maxillary maxillary cyst. These are very important points please note it down. Here is the schematic representation of typical sites of solitary bone cyst. The aneurysmal bone cyst is also commonly seen in the horizontal ramus of mandible in 10 to 15 year old patients. This is a cavity within the bone that is lined with connective tissue. It may be empty or it may contain fluid, but it has no epithelial lining. 
and it may be caused due to a localized aberration in normal bone remodeling or metabolism. Now the important thing about it is it occurs in the first two decades of life and the lesion shows male predominance. Here in this image you can see the solitary bone cyst in the mandible and typical localization of traumatic bone cyst is seen in the figure on the left side. Now there's traumatic bone cyst, hemorrhagic bone cyst, extravestation cyst, progressive bone cyst, solitary bone cyst, unicameral bone cyst, idiopathic bone cavity, all are pseudo bone cyst, okay? So there should be no confusion regarding this. Here is the schematic representation of an aneurysmal bone cyst. This is an uncommon hemorrhagic lesion of the bone and the name of this entity is misleading in that it does not contain vascular aneurysm and it is not a true bone cyst. It represents an exaggerated localized proliferative response of the vascular tissue. It is more common in individuals less than 30 years of age with a predisposition for females. Whereas for pseudo bone cyst like traumatic bone cyst and hemorrhagic bone cyst there was male predominance. And there may be history of traumatic injury and of recent displacement of teeth which are vital. This was all about cyst. I hope it was informative and it will help you to retain things better for your exams. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video and stay connected.